Oh, welcome to our lesson on Nash Equilibrium. This is a kind of an interesting lesson because almost everybody in game theory has had principles of microeconomics uh, where this, you know, the prisoner's dilemma is discussed and you discuss the Nash Equilibrium at that point, usually in the course. Uh, I guess it depends. Some courses maybe you don't quite phrase it that way. Uh, but in, the, in this course, we've taken a little bit more of a slow methodical approach to getting to this point. Uh, so now we introduce it. Uh, there is a very specific definition with the Nash Equilibrium, and you'll want to make sure you know this and not whatever else you used to think of as describing the Nash Equilibrium, as it's pretty important that you know precisely what the Nash Equilibrium, what a Nash Equilibrium is, what it means uh, in the context of this course. So what is the Nash Equilibrium? So it's the it's a list of strategies. So each player is playing a particular strategy where no player can get a better payoff by switching to any other choice given what everybody else is already doing. So when we think of what the term equilibrium means, right? It's a stable point. Nobody wants to do anything different. Nash Equilibrium is the same thing. The given that what everybody else is already doing, you would not want to change your strategy choice in the particular game. That is an Ash equilibrium. Um, so the, another way to phrase this: no player has an incentive to deviate to switch to a different strategy um, if you're at an Ash equilibrium. Thing that uh, is nice: all games actually have a Nash equilibrium. Now, what we're covering now are called pure strategy Nash equilibria. Uh, so it's like in the prisoner's dilemma, they both confess, right? Confess, confess is this, is the Nash equilibrium, and um, the strategy of playing confess you do that all the time, right? If you're a prisoner in the game, you should confess 100% of the time, according to the payoffs. That's your strategy. Uh, some games don't have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. But instead of Nash Equilibrium where um, one or more of the players chooses to play one option some percentage of the time and a different option some other percentage of the time. Right? That's called a mixed strategy Nash Equilibrium. But this this goes back to John Nash, uh, you know, of a beautiful mind fame. And what, what Nash really helped show is that under some relatively basic conditions all games have this equilibrium, have an Nash equilibrium. Not always pure strategy, but all games have it. A game can indeed have more than one Nash equilibria as well. So a game may have multiple Nash equilibria, not just one. The game that we've already studied some, the Prisoner's Dilemma game, let's go through and look at what the Nash equilibrium is. Now I suspect you all know what it is because we've covered what dominant strategies are, we know what everybody wants to play. But let's just look at it in the context of are you at a strategy place are you at a point where everybody's playing a strategy and nobody wants to change their strategy given what the other player is doing. Okay, so what happens if prisoner A is confessing and prisoner B is denying? Uh, prisoner B would want to switch from deny to confess. Right? It's not a Nash equilibrium. Ten years in prison is worse than five years in prison. So because prisoner B has an incentive to choose, confess instead of deny, to deviate, to switch the choice, not a Nash equilibrium. And actually we see the same thing here with um, if prisoner A is choosing deny and prisoner B is choosing confess, A now gets ten years in prison. If by switching though, prisoner A could switch uh, get a payoff of only five years in prison. Right? Five years in prison is much better than ten years in prison. Far better payout. Now prisoner A wants to switch from deny to confess, so this is not a Nash equilibrium. If they're both denying, and this is the outcome that of course looks best in the game, right? They each get a payoff of two. But the problem you see here is they each have an incentive to change their choice. Prisoner A it's an incentive to change from deny to confess, to go from two years in prison to one year in prison. So does prisoner B, from two years in prison to one year in prison. So you only need one person to want to switch to make it not a Nash equilibrium. In this particular game now, 
both of them do, so it's definitely not a Nash equilibrium of this particular game. So what is the Nash equilibrium? It's for both prisoners to confess. If you look at this, prisoner A does not want to switch from five years in prison to ten years in prison. Prisoner B does not want to switch from five years in prison to ten years in prison. Neither player has an incentive to deviate given what both players are doing, given what the other player is doing, or all, you know, the general definition is what all other players are doing. So far we're only in a two-player game, so it's just what the other player is doing. So the Nash equilibrium is for them both to confess, but this is not a Pareto efficient outcome. Right? Pareto efficient outcome, both of them denying. Two years in prison is better than five years in prison. It's a better outcome for them. So confess, confess. It's the Nash equilibrium, but it's not Pareto efficient. So we've learned about dominant strategies already. <clears throat> How does that play in? Well, anytime all players in a game have, and we should qualify this by saying strongly dominant strategies, are strictly dominant strategies. Anytime players have strictly or strongly dominant strategies, it will point you to the Nash equilibrium. And it will point you to the one and only Nash equilibrium. Uh, you know, in that other game, both players have these strictly dominant strategies to confess. Well, that points you to the Nash equilibrium of confess, confess. So you can use dominant strategies to point you to the Nash equilibrium. And you can also use dominated strategies. So sometimes it'll lead you straight to the Nash equilibrium. Other times it will just help you eliminate some strategies, right? If, if one player has some dominated strategies or a dominant strategy, um, it can help make the number of outcomes you have to search through to find the Nash equilibrium. It can help reduce that a bit for you. So I say in class exercise here, but um, uh, what I want you to do is they want this to be a game that you work on and bring to class. So one thing for you to do on your own um, is to try to find the Nash equilibrium of this game. What is the Nash equilibrium of the incumbent versus potential entrant game? And the way I want you to find this is by looking at each of the four possible outcomes to see uh, does either player have an incentive to change his or her choice to something different, right? If the answer to that is yes, you know it's not a Nash equilibrium. The equilibrium is the point where nobody wants to change the choice, the stable point. Thing to note on these, uh, I mentioned it at the beginning, the Nash equilibria we have discussed to this point are pure strategy Nash equilibria. Right? All the players want to do a particular action 100% of the time. Mixed strategy Nash equilibria covered at the beginning of the test two material for the course. Uh, we'll be covering that pretty extensively. It's a bit more complicated. The second game that I want you to work through prior to coming to class um, is the French fry game again. So before you used uh, the iterated deletion of dominated strategies to find the outcome of the game, what I want you to do now is look for the Nash equilibrium or multiple Nash equilibria without the iterated deletion of dominated strategies. So I want you to look at every possible outcome to see does either firm A or firm B want to change their choice. If they do, you know that's not a Nash equilibrium. If they don't, if you find an outcome where they're both content staying right where they are, you have found a Nash equilibrium. So that is the second, you know, these are the two exercises I'd like you to do, these two games. I'd like you to try to work through those and we will go through them together in our next class period.